Welcome everybody to the Scrumptious Sandwich Show. I am your gracious host, Andrew Brown, and we are coming to you live now with season two. It's finally here. I'm so excited to be doing this. If you are returning to the channel, I wanna just thank you again for the continued support and just allowing me to be able to keep on doing what I love and following this journey of sandwiches around the world. If this is your first time to the channel, don't forget, subscribe to the video and hit that notification bell so you know when we'll go live in the future. And also, please engage with us. Please engage with our posts on our socials, like the video here, comment below and let us know what you're thinking about the channel because really, I do this for me, if I'm being honest, but I also do this for the viewer. I love my audience. I wanna thank y'all so much. But without further ado, we're gonna get right into what you are here for. We're gonna be making the king of the cold cuts today, the Italian-inspired muffaletta sandwich. We're gonna be making our own homemade olive salad. We're gonna be throwing that all together on this delicious, delicious delicacy. So without further ado, let's get straight into it, shall we? All right, now. As we always do in this episode, we're gonna give you some of the brief history behind this sandwich so that you can also know where these culinary treats come from and how they came to be in fruition. And a fun fact that I found out about myself, I originally picked this episode because I wanted to have an Italian representative on the show because the Italians make amazing food. Keep up the good work, guys. But it actually turns out that the sandwich originated in the US. It actually was made in New Orleans originally in 1906 at Central Grocery Store in the French Quarter. Now, again, like many other things that I've come to realize about these sandwiches, it is hotly contested exactly who was the first person that made this sandwich. But it is widely said that Central Grocery Store is the first one. But again, that is for you guys to decide. And exactly who makes the best one? You gotta go to New Orleans to find out that for yourself. But I am gonna beat all of them by making my own best one here right now and today. So without further ado, let's get into the ingredients we're gonna be using, shall we? All right, now, here we are back and I've got some delicious ingredients right in front of me today. I think we're gonna be making, first and foremost, our homemade olive salad that will be going on top of our muffaletta, and this is a crucial, crucial part of it. It's the olive salad, the meats, and the cheeses are really, really what make this sandwich stand out from the rest. So I'm gonna go over some of the four, what I think are the most important, important things that you need to have in this. First and foremost, olives. Now I'm going with two different kind of olives today. We'll have some Spanish ones, and we'll have some Italian ones. As you can tell, they look a little bit different in their size, the region that they come from, as well as these, well, you might be familiar with these from your martinis, your cocktails, any of that kind of stuff. That's what these good Italian olives come from. But mixed together, they bring their own sugary, sweet, not sugary, that's the wrong term, salty, sweet kind of taste that is really gonna give this the punch that it needs. We also have some pickle giardineria, I don't think I pronounced that right, but that's what we're gonna go with. Please let me know down below how you actually pronounce that. But it is basically just some pickled spices, cucumbers, pepperoncinis, and cauliflower. You can find it in any kind of superstore, and it is absolutely an amazing topping. And over here, last but not least, we have some Calabrian chilies. They come from the Calabria region in Italy, obviously, as you can tell from the name, and they usually come in oil. You can see these bad boys are dripping, and that is exactly what you want out of them. They are so, so good, and they actually love it so much in Italy, too, that I know they even have a feast day for it in the region where they make it and have all types of different things from apparel, clothing, recipes, all types of stuff, just celebrating this amazing chili that comes from their region. So we are gonna celebrate that as well and making it a part of our muffaletta today. Now, what you have to do for the olive salad is just take all of these ingredients, combine them together, and blend them up in a food processor or blender, whatever you have, to make a good, solid, chunky kind of spread that you're gonna put on top of your sandwich. 
So without further ado, I'm gonna, we got a couple of garlic and shallots here. I'm gonna cut them up real quick and get them ready. And then we're gonna throw everything together and start making our olive salad. And one more amazing new introduction. Yeah, that's right. I heard what y'all said. Everybody was talking mad garbage on my old knives. So we went and got professional, baby. Yes, that's right. I have a proper chef's knife now. Thank you, Brandon. Couldn't do it without you. Whiskey business is the best in the world. Don't forget to check it out. But anyway, this, it really, really just will make your life so, so much better if you A, learn how to use a chef's knife which masterclass you've been helping me a lot. Is that? Shout out to you, Gordon well Ramsay. Well You're the best. And also get a good, properly sharpened chef's knife and it will really just make your cutting that much easier. Watch this. Ooh. Ooh. Like silky butter. I'm just gonna do this a few more times and then we'll get to combining everything. All right, now I have chopped up my shallot and my garlic. Again, as you can see, I didn't do a fine chop, just chopped it up a little bit just to make it a little easier on our food processor here. You can chop it up more if you want, but again, when you make this spread, you don't wanna puree it. You don't want it to be like a liquid or a sauce. It wants to have some of that, that chunk, that grain. That's what gives it its mm, essence. So it gives a good texture, it gives a good flavor. So you don't need to get it all too cut up. Just make it a little bit easier on your food processor. Okay, now we got two different types of oils going in here too. We got some olive oil. Mm, just to give it a little bit more, give it a little bit more breakdown. And well, I guess it's not an oil, but it's a liquid. That's more of what I meant. We got some red wine vinegar in here. We're gonna top it off with some capers as well. and. Finally, top it off with oregano and a little bit of salt and pepper because everything needs salt and pepper. If you ever have a question if it needs salt and pepper, it does need salt and pepper. So after we've done that, now that you've got all your ingredients in your mixing bowl here, I'm just gonna take it, put the lid on, take it over to my food processor and start blending it all together. All right. Now, we've got all of our ingredients in our processor and we're about to start processing, but I do have to mention something that has been brought to my attention by my wonderful crew. Um, I thought the olives that I got were pre-pitted, but they are not. So make sure that the olives that you use and put into there do not have pits. Um, we are already in too deep, so we are gonna progress as is. <laughs> but for you, the viewer at home, make sure to try and avoid that. It'll make your life easier. But should it be too much of a big deal, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of avoiding. We're gonna go right ahead and start pulsing. You might wanna watch out for your ears, my good sir. <laughs> okay, now, after few minutes of getting some good pureeing in. There we go. That's that consistency that we're looking for right there. See, it's all chopped up. Everyone's all friendly in there together, but not too puree or creamy like a sauce or anything like that. Just good and chunked and all in that. So I'm gonna take this and put this off to the side while we start getting our cold cuts ready. My mouth is already salivating. Okay, now that we have our olive salad made, we are going to get into the my favorite part, which is the assembly. And with that, we're gonna get into the real stars of this program, in my opinion. That's the bread, the cheeses, and the meats that go into this amazing muffaletta. Now, if you're outside of New Orleans, it may be a little bit hard for you to find actual traditional muffaletta bread, which is okay. It's just not gonna be exactly what it is gonna be. Today, I couldn't find any, so I'm gonna be using a focaccia. You can use anything that kinda has a larger loaf like this, and you're gonna see why later in the video. But a ciabatta loaf, a muff uh, focaccia loaf, any kind of Italian loaf, will be perfect for this. I have two different types of cheeses as well that we we're gonna use. 
And then we have some provolone that I got right here, as well as some delicious Swiss cheese, Emmentale, as it is called originally. Now, fun fact about Swiss cheese, you can even see, these don't have too many holes, but they got some little small holes. Now, that comes from the fermentation process and the slicing process of the Swiss cheese. But historically, they used to be much bigger holes because when it was handmade, it's not as even, and different distributions of items and ingredients wouldn't be as thorough throughout the Swiss cheese. So it ended up lending to bigger hole sizes, but with the industrial, lever industrial revolution, and more mechanization processes that came along with this, the general size and frequency of the holes both went down. So that's something I learned I knew today about one of our favorite holy cheeses. Holy above all. Now, let's get into our amazing, amazing meats. Right here, we got the prosciutto di parma, smoked Italian style. It I absolutely would do horrible, horrible things for prosciutto. It's one of my favorite meats. We got some hot capicola ham, which both of these are just very, they're pork cuts that are cured and smoked in a specific way. I got hot for both of them, so they're gonna have a little bit of a kick on it. So that's something that you can always look forward to. I personally like a lot of kick and flavor in my recipes, but you can also just get them regular. And last but not least, I have some hot mortadella here. Now, I had never heard of mortadella before making this as well. I didn't know what it was. And in my research, I actually figured out it was first created in an area of Italy called Bologna. Bologna? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yes, because it's bologna. It's just very fancy bologna. Tastes better, higher grade, but yeah, it's that stuff. So. Without further ado, we're gonna get into how you create this wonderful, wonderful sandwich. And all you wanna do is try and slice. You wanna keep your loaf together as much as possible. There you go. So then, your bread. If you've got it cut perfectly, voila should just come right off like that. Now you got that good base here. Just take it apart and then you start layering your ingredients one right after another. So without further ado, I'm just gonna take my meats, my meats, lay them down first, cheese, lay it down first, olive salad, lay it down on top of that. And then that's about all you have to do in the assembly. So I'm gonna get right into that now. And now we are in the home stretch, y'all. We got our layer upon layer upon layer of delicious meats and cheeses and olive salad. And now to put the final touches on it, this is gonna be a simple process. You're just gonna take that top half of that bread that you made earlier, put it right down on top. Take something like a baking sheet. I got one baking sheet here as well, put it right on top and then get something that's got a good little weight to it it'll just nicely press down and then you're gonna leave it there to press for about an hour at least you can do it for longer but it doesn't add any flavor it just kind of gets everybody nice and familiar together so we're gonna give this an hour to press together and then we're gonna come back and do the reveal see you then all right now I've left it sit to press for roughly an hour, and it's time to reveal what our beautiful muffaletta looks like. Break it into it, shall we? 
Look at that. See, there's no cooking or anything necessarily, but now it's scrunched down and everybody is nice and comfortable and familiar with each other. So for the last step, I'm just gonna come with my knife. And this is a great one if you wanna have something that you can have multiple days in a row. You can take it, you can freeze it, it freezes very well. You can have it as cold cut, you can dole it out multiple times, or you can feed a whole crowd of people. This is the perfect, perfect sandwich to do that with. Okay, now that we have this all sawed up, I'm ready to go. I'm going in for a taste test of my muffaletta. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a pip. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> there are times a charm. Alright. <laughs> now, other than the pits and <laughs> it was absolutely delicious. So again, remember to pit your olives, but man, that is a good, good combination of sweet and salty and meaty cheese. It's like almost a whole entire charcuterie board in your mouth. So I'm so happy still with how this turned out. Just watch your teeth, everybody. <laughs> All, right, All right, now, even though there were a few bumps in the road along the way, this muffaletta turned out absolutely amazing. So I am so happy with it. And with that, concludes another awesome episode of the Scrumptious Sandwich Show. I want you all to thank our sponsors and be ready for some more amazing new ones that we'll be announcing in the next couple weeks in our future videos. Speaking of future videos, please continue to check along with this journey with me. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos go live. And please follow us on all of our socials, our supporters our sponsor socials and our own socials will be in the description below please make sure to check all of that out and stay in tune with us and until i see y'all next time stay scrumptious